All right, we're going to kick off today's meeting by talking about the P2P peer discovery. Uh, there's been a number of meetings outside of these weekly coalition meetings to discuss um, requirements, capabilities, uh, costs, and so forth. Uh, for the listeners, as a reminder, there were two bidders that uh, put proposals together for us. One was OCI, one was Fudan. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take our official vote now, get that on recording. Um, so let's start with EOS. Uh, I am voting for Fudan. Uh, it comes in at a lower cost. It expands our potential teams that we can work with. Uh, it's a safe RFP on an item that's been pending for years, essentially. Um, and uh, uh, they do seem to have the capacity to take on this work and the experience. Uh, and so for those reasons, I vote for Fudan. Wax? I second that. I guess, um, again, we need to expand um, the reach of... Uh, um, various different teams that are capable of doing this work, uh, you know, introducing another team to the equation from Asia uh, should provide a very competitive partner to OCI and other teams that are located in US or, or Europe, uh, which hopefully over time will bring down uh, the overall cost of, of development um, while also maintaining uh, uh, quality and 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 then again expanding um, you know teams that that can actually do that work uh, to other areas. UX uh, for the same reasons. Uh, UX also votes for Fudan. I think this is this is great to have another uh, team being able to participate, especially considering that this RFP is a low risk one. So Fudan. Tell us. Also, a vote for uh, Fudan. Um, everybody else shared pretty much the same reasons for, for our vote. Thank you. All right. So what I will do uh, as a reminder to everybody it is the new year in uh, Asia right now. So once the new year holiday is over, I will engage them about setting up like we do with everything else. Uh, Project milestones, uh, check-ins, status reports, you know, all the fun stuff. So it'll probably be two weeks, but I'll give everybody an update on, you know, how the project kickoff went. I would say that if you want to um, at least just let them know that we've made this decision um, earlier rather than later. So today, tomorrow type of thing, that would likely be appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. It'll you know, I'm sure they'll nice little holiday gift for them. Yeah. Well, and this particular one has been dragging on for a while. Yes, and I recognize absolutely. a big part of that was me being away. Um, so apologies to everybody else. All right. Uh, next item, uh, coalition top up to fund RFPs. Do we have uh, latest numbers from Darren Guillaume? Or proposed numbers, uh, I, I guess draft numbers. I apologize. I didn't I did not uh reach him, uh reach out to him to have them calculated, but I'll do that right away. Have them gotcha. the call. So then I imagine um there's nothing else on this item for today. And Guillaume is with a U after the A. Yeah, I realized that was I was typing the word numbers. <laughs> That's why it's so much easier to write gnome, I guess. Yeah, G, yeah. yeah. G or gnome always, always G, works. Um, yeah, G gnome. Yeah, we can't yeah. all be named head. <laughs> I say that, but Jeff's pretty easy too. Although people say it G sometimes, so. Geff. Geff. Well, wouldn't you have G E O F F? Yeah. Is that also Jeff? That's the uh, typically the. British spelling of it. Mm. All right, uh, RAM limitation fixes. Uh, this also, I'm going to turn over to Bart uh, for an update on the ENF bid. Thanks, Jeff. Um, okay, so here's the status of that. We've had to take a, a pretty hard look, uh, I think, as everyone has, with 
the resources that we have in the ENF and where we're spending them, yeah. uh, given the state of the markets and just the overall state of the technology. Um, as a result, I think when we look at this RFP as it is currently uh, currently drafted, I don't think uh, we're going to be able to tender uh, a full bid for that RFP. Um, I think looking at the RFP more deeply, we'll, we could kind of divide it out into what I would call um, practical solutions that we need today and then um, – near future solutions that we think we need for scaling and all the way to some of the uh, requirements were uh, kind of a, a more pursuit of what does blockchain look like in five years time uh, and getting that research done. And it's really those those kind of last two segments that I think fall outside of what we can, as a ENF, justify resourcing right now. Um, we we completely acknowledge that there are some immediate needs in terms of RAM limitations and um uh, and I think uh, what we would prefer is if we can uh, either bid directly on part of this RFP, but only part of it, or if we want to, uh, if the coalition would, would issue a trimmed down version of the RFP, uh, we would still be happy to consider including that um, in kind of our, our near-term roadmap um, to see if we can get some of that work done. Uh, we just can't really, at this point, afford to do the the full RFP um, as it's currently spec. So to be far more specific about it, um, I think in terms of the actual business requirements and and technical requirements that we would that we would be very interested in bidding on. Um, obviously, some of the generic business requirements um, would be there, uh, but really it's more about uh, let's see, BR01 and 02. Um, those are the ones about efficiently using the current RAM system resource uh, and then also using uh, currently available hardware uh, better. And then when you look at the technical requirements that mapped, mapped to that, it would be uh, essentially TR1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then so we, we basically stop at TR6 where we start to discuss um, things like uh, going into a, uh, a horizontal scaling solution inside of a, a producer or validator node, and then stop very shy of getting to the 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 ones where we start talking about sharding at a protocol level uh, in general. And so, just to repeat, that's basically uh, TR one, two, three, four, and five, um, and then that would be BR O uh, uh, BR one uh, BR Two and then, of course, the natural we, BR three. We discuss the trade offs and and document and everything like that. So um, that's what I would like to put to the coalition. Uh, if if that sounds acceptable, um, we could have a bid in for what that work looks like um, in a matter of you know a week or two, pretty easily. If 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 they're okay with the scope. So that's that's what I'm proposing, and I'm open to discussion and questions about it. That makes sense to me. I think uh, incremental progress, small in incremental progress is better than no progress. And to confirm, Bart, this would be, the idea would be to address and to focus on the current pain points and really relieve those pain points. Yes. And and that's, you know, that is our interpretation of what the, the current pain parts uh, are coming from the, the coalition chains. The ones that, you know, like EOS are really bumping up this this kind of practical limit of uh, if we get a lot of usage on the chain and the protocol as it currently exists, uh, it, it doesn't really work as well as we think it should. And, and, and we hit scaling limitations that are outside of the protocol and, and definitely in, in hardware and things like that. Alleviating those concerns is is something that I think we, we see as like the, the short-term immediate focus that we would still, I think, uh, it still fits like a, a our current kind of like resource resourcing. I like breaking it into like the immediate, what are the immediate fixes or enhancements that could be made within the scope of like, let's say one node, like the, the actual block producer node. And then, and then, you know, mid, mid to long-term where with the long-term being, you know, some sort of a sharding um, where you can actually, um, 
you know, employ multiple pieces of hardware working together. So you have, you know, horizontal scaling um, as part of that. Um, obviously, you know, we, we are the ones on, on WAX running into this um, because, uh, I mean, at the current state, I guess uh, we would not be able to support more than 150 million accounts on chain. Uh, and uh, we already have massive problem with having 14 million. So, um, you know, we've we've artificially arrested the growth by by introducing friction into our wallets. Um, and uh, there is a paywall, essentially. But I would like to remove that at some point, except that, uh, you know, if I were to do that today, then wax would be dead within probably six months to a year because block producers would not be able to procure big enough hardware to support such growth so it's 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 kind of a interesting situation that we find ourselves in and and i'm sure you know all other antelope chains will hit that uh point uh, at some point too yeah i support that i support that redo i guess reduced scope um and addressing the current pain points that obviously wax is currently feeling and that hopefully we'll all feel um uh, and so it's it's buying us time as well so i would i would support doing that and as bart mentioned just from a resource perspective if that's something that enf can handle um and or bid on and then subsequently if, if that work is assigned that we can handle that then i think it's it's good for everybody as you mentioned lucas instead of doing all of it at least doing the portions that we can is better than doing nothing i think there's also a, a fair argument that this portion is the portion we can do in a short-term fashion we can hope to do in a short-term fashion i think especially once you get into horizontal scaling um the coordination aspect of that is going to be significant. Um, and so they just look at chains outside of the uh, antelope ecosystem that have tried to go that direction and deploy sharding and scaling. And they end up being multi-year endeavors just to get it right and get it safe and get it deployed. And I think we can all agree that you know, multi-year is too long of a timeline for relief uh, for some of these immediate problems. Um, that again, yeah, wax is facing today, and we all hope to be facing tomorrow. So, I think also um, whenever you're talking about uh, sharding or parallelization, you can handle that type EC and uh, instant finality as well. So, um, in a way, I think I think it's it's probably not a very uh, efficient use of our time and and money to kind of pursue that if we're going to still have a solution that's coming out at some point and um, that will that will essentially provide a similar benefit. But uh, yeah, and, and um, regarding the, um, I guess the the rescoping of that RFP UX vote, yes, as well. Excellent. That just leaves you, Jesse. Jesse, tell us. You are muted if you're trying to speak, Jesse. And or you are not there. And just record him abstaining for now and we've got majority anyways mm. and really this is not really assigning work it's um so so either way there's no real vote the so much as as it's gonna have no choice right yeah i would say that's a tentative yes i would like to get jesse's <laughs> perspective though um but it's i'd guess it would be a yes All right, so we can maybe we come back to that to finish this off. Um, Just on, on that topic before we move on, uh, <clears throat> we do have the um, Tuesday, uh, I believe it's 2 p.m. time slot, 2 p.m. in Eastern time slot. Uh, that is the uh, standing scalability plus call. So if there is a um, if there is a a will by the chains to discuss this particular uh, item a bit more in technical detail. 
we can use some of that time. We've been using it so far for instant finality and uh, IBC stuff, but uh, that's also within the mandate of that uh, working group. So um, just 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 reach out to me if you want to uh, put it on the agenda for next week. That's and, a good and, idea. I was just going to say I, I support this. My my AirPods and Bluetooth are biting each other. So. All right. Awesome. Thank you. One one question I just wanted to confirm, uh, Bar. This is a good what you what you plan to do is a good boundary from everything I've heard. Meaning, uh, you know, doing this now doesn't preclude or or you know duplicate efforts when we try to do the larger effort later. Right. I don't I don't believe there's any significant uh, impact like the the larger efforts. Um, you know, it's it's impossible to say whether or not we would make a change here that might make it just ever so slightly harder going forward but uh that would be kind of in the in the weeds details like i think yeah. for the most part these are completely orthogonal concerns where you know we're just really trying to make the um the quality of the current solution you know map better to what we expect the hardware of the day can do um and and and, and searching for efficiencies there and i don't think that's going to be a negative impact. I, I can't guarantee it because the work's not done. This is a research RFP. So, you know, maybe during that research, we can identify um, whether we think there is any, we're, we're putting any risk, any additional risk on that future work. Um, I really don't think we will be at this point, but that would be something of uh, artifact of the, uh, of the work itself. All right. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. All right. So I will work with the ENF team to figure out when we can draft a proposal for everybody to review. All right, next topic, Antler CDT. This is really a, um, just sort of a status uh, update from this. Uh, so from a scoping point of view, uh, Originally, and due to some resource constraints, uh, most of the scope is still intact, but there was, um, we did have to shuffle around uh, some of the scope that can go into the March release. Um, and that was, Bart, can you remind me which one, which component was it, the testing framework? Which component is going to slide out? Which, yeah, it's going to slide out. Uh, it was the, the debugger, the, the debugger, debugger. I'm sorry. That's yeah. So uh, and th this was purely just a resource constraint. We would rather get the components done well that we know we can get done, rather than try to rush through and throw things together and then risk missing the deadline with more than one thing. Are there any com uh, comments on that? Questions. Uh, just for context, that this was not an item. I guess it's an item that we decided to prioritize as the coalition, but the ENF um, decided to take this on um, uh, in order to kind of fast track it internally. So there's no cost to the coalition per se, but we had mentioned that we would be reporting on this uh, continuously because it was a priority that was highlighted when we did the last reprioritization exercise. Yes, thank you. And obviously, it's going to go in the code that everybody's using. And so for people to know that if you're expecting a certain component of that code, then uh, this particular component won't be likely, will not be in the March, April release. All right. Uh, next item, uh, Ledger app. Uh, there wasn't. So Eric has definitely been uh, moving on that. Uh, Ted, do you want to give an update on this, or or Bart, does this go back to you going forward? Well, I have some update, but I don't have the important update. I don't think uh, Eric understood it, which was about the um, getting the three tokens added after the word. Um, it, it has been making steady progress, so uh, I think he's waiting on them at this point. Um, he's, they're not waiting on us, but I couldn't get him because it's not, he's probably not the right person 
would be talking about whether they'll take the four logos or the four token names. I don't know if that helps. That was one of the outstanding statuses. I mean, that matches my understanding of it as well. Um, I'm happy to take over the reporting on this going forward. I'm not not completely paged in as to far uh, as far as what the details are here, other than I, Eric's side of the work. But there is uh, currently we're waiting more on them. As far as I know, then then Eric, uh, I'm only aware of the Eric work with Ledger. I don't know of anyone else working or talking to Ledger. It, maybe I'm maybe I'm not in the loop. Are there any questions on this? All right. Well, I mean, for Bart, um, this is kind of a um, kind of a doing it right in the middle of the meeting. One of the things prior to you or you when you were not on one of these calls, Bart, the coalition asked today when you list the app, you know, the, the EOS network app or whatever it says, it lists one token after it, it lists EOS. And the coalition said, hey, it'll work with all of our wallets. I mean, with all of our chains. Can we get EOS, Telos, you know, UXP and WAX listed after it? And that is an outstanding question. And the only person I know that has any communication path with Ledger is Eric Passmore. Uh, Aaron had gotten contacted by them. I don't know if Aaron's on the call today. Um, so I don't know if Aaron's on. I don't know if Aaron has a contact person as well, but the only person I know the only two people I know that have any interaction with Ledger were Aaron, and we handed that off to Eric. And so that is the outstanding issue is those tokens being listed after the app in the marketplace. I am in their Discord. Um, I have not talked to them in quite some time. So, I mean, I I have contact. I am just not in contact. Uh -huh. And I doubt Eric is the right person. He's talking to developers about, you know, running automated test scripts and stuff, which he's done and submitted to them uh, and is waiting for further guidance from them. Uh, they're probably not the right people to be asking this question. So we don't really have a a business or a marketing relationship with them at this point. Uh, the coalition, the ENF does not, nor does it appear the coalition does. So um, that might be something we need to bump to another level or to someone else. I don't know if we, I mean, I can bring it up to Patty if we think that that's the right way to go about it. Or, you know, uh, we can, Jeff and I can talk about it to see if, you know, it's something we would handle. Uh, we just don't have a relationship with them this at this point other than technical. Or if no one cares anymore, we can drop it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it would be good if we could get that done, and that'd be a win for Antelope, right? If EOS is the only one that's listed and really the technical implementation is the same in the back end or close to it anyways, um, getting that for the for, for Antelope, uh, I, I would like to pursue that if if we can, if Eric can. Well, every every um application that I'm aware of, um in the marketplace only has a single token listed after it. I didn't see any that have multiple tokens listed. Uh, if that's true, that would be great to hear because then it sounds like it's feasible, but it's not clear that it is something that they support. Can we maybe, uh, I think Eric is not here right now. Could we maybe just ask Eric, get an update internally and then report back next week to see if it's even feasible or if anything's been done on that file? Uh, we yeah, could... I'll... I'll do it again. Or yeah, uh, I can reach out to him and ask about the technical details. But I, I just want to echo what Ted said. Like Eric is not going to be the right contact um, mm. 
for pursuing the rest of this. You know, he would he he reached out purely to make sure that uh, we were we were getting whatever we needed to get done to make sure that 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 application stayed in good standing with them and was you know you know didn't have any outstanding bugs or security fixes that needed like. So he's purely kind of a maintenance and technical mode there. Um, he might be able to connect us in some way, but we really should have someone who is, you know, like like Ted implied on the business or on the marketing side aspect of this, uh, establishing and, and maintaining that side of the relationship. Um, if there is, if there's engineering work that needs to be done to support that, then we could of course come back and, and talk to Eric about it. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to put it on him to to manage the the business yeah. relationship there. I, I agree with that. So yeah. I could take it. I just don't even know where to start. I mean, I could go to their web page and start popping away at people saying, Hey, you know, we're, we're the EOS group and we want to make some changes and it may come down to where we have to list the same application four times. It'll be the exact same binary, but it's listed four times, one with a wax, one with a, cause it doesn't look like it will be easy to make an antelope wallet that has or an antelope you know device whatever that has um four tokens after it so we might need to just make four binaries you know the same thing with four different names and get them all listed and then the question is should we be doing all that or should we hand the binary over to the coalition members and let them sort through that process yeah. i'm just uh I think once we know that Ted, if, if we have definite answer that you know antelope listing with like these four tokens is not possible, then I think each of each of us would then take over the binary and we would apply through similar process to essentially get get that listed, right? And okay, then we can so manage that. I'm gonna take it. Um, uh, I'm adding it to my one-on-one -on -one with Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> for this week and so um jeff and i will take this uh from like a business development standpoint and we'll hunt it down and we'll give a status next week if we can make contact with them i mean I, we're we're going to start with the you know about yeah. us page on their website and work from there can't can you not get a um introduction from from eric um at least a handoff to the right person seems like that'd be more well he, he's technical he's dealing with guys that run uh, automated test suites they, like they don't know you know what i mean like we can try i'll ask or no or I, I understand to but be fair, fair, to be fair this all started on, on the technical side right i'm sorry i'm what? sorry doug but this is all started on the technical side right so the the, the genesis of this was ledger was uh, about to delist the the uh, um the 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 mm -hmm. i guess support for eos token and therefore uh, you know, that would essentially go away from their website. So the genesis behind it initially was to make sure that all the technical requirements uh, necessary for them to keep that listing were in place. Yes. Um, I.e. security audits, whatever was missing, right? Yes. And then, and then over time, that kind of evolved from a technical requirement to business development right so 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 to be fair um you know we started on the right path on the technical path and then now we kind of change the scope to the business development so that that that, that needs to be a separate thing right so yeah. let's let's handle first oh, you know let's yeah, make I sure understand that, that and not and gonna get delisted I, and, and then we can take over just so everyone and, knows they reached out to us through Aaron but they reached out saying hey does anyone support this thing we didn't have a contact with them. They, you know, and then Aaron said, Hey, do any of you guys want to support this? Eric stepped up and said he would. So it really was them outbound. We, you know, saying we're going to knock you out of the store if you don't fix these automated tests. So yeah, to, yeah. To I, add I, some... I'm only suggesting that we, that rather than solely going, you know, beating the brown, the bushes on the webpage, we, um, we just asked, you know, have have hey have Aaron ask his guy who you know to make an introduction to between our uh business development um yeah, cohorts so that that's all rather than rather than I think it's a it's a worthwhile avenue to pursue um but uh I'm not doing it so so you guys pursue it however you you think is best I just 
I just sent Eric a telegram saying, hey, if you got an email, connect me an email to your guy and let me handle it from there. And that's easy enough. If he's been emailing some guy, he'll just say, hey, Ted K. Hall wants to talk, you know, ask you some questions. I'll then say, so that way it's not me cold emailing the guy. And I'll say, do you have someone in BD we can ask a few questions to or uh, in your sales team or your marketing team or whatever? So I've already done that now. So Eric is now alerted. That's all I was suggesting. That's great. The contact is with business development people in Discord. Eric is in Discord with these people. Oh, it's all Discord? Love yes um they have their own developer kind of relations team in there there's like probably 10 ledger employees in the channel with us um so there are contacts there that could leverage be leveraged there and possibly connect to the appropriate people and another comment on this whole discussion is there will be technical changes required because the code itself has the app or like the app's name and the app's logo in it um, which are part of the changes. So most likely there is a pull request required through this process, which will update the name, update the logo, update the Got words it. inside of the app itself. Mm-hmm. Um, so either uh, the way I see this is there's two paths. We can use the contacts in Discord, which involve business development people, which should be able to connect us to the right paths. Or we start on the pull request to change the name inside of the app along with all of like the metadata about the app and then we present it to the developers and we're like hey we're going in this direction we're going to be changing the name and the one part that is not in the app is the store listing name like we can do the pull request to change the app details but the store details we need updated who do we reach out to in that regard so i think those are kind of the two options but they both should be able to go that way. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I also pinged Eric to maybe connect me on Discord. I'll I'll I'll, yep. I'll abuse myself that way as well. <laughs> I love Discord. Me too. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Uh are we ready to move on? All right, I'll take that as a yes. Uh, developer onboarding and development workshops. Any uh, feedback from OCI? I believe they were um, reproposing or re. Um, I heard that, so I didn't go to the bathroom. <laughs> I realized you're going to another one that falls on me. <laughs> they have not come back with a plan yet. Um, I'm not holding out a lot of hope. I do have a call with, um, we should ask them that, Jeff on the status meeting, which we just had today, we can bring that up to them. Okay. I do have a call with their sales guy. Um, it's next week. It's not this week um, where they're asking us for some stuff and I can bring that up again, or we can just telegram, uh, you know, Dan, but they know it's in their court. I think it's just caused their head to spin a, a bit and they're, they've lost uh, their, um their delivery manager for our account who used to kind of mostly manage this for us. So they're playing a little shorthanded and I think they're just, uh, I I would, my guess is this is not a priority to them right now because once they, once we went back and said the original plan and how they wanted the building wouldn't work for us, they realized they had to kind of rethink the whole thing. And so there was, it was an indeterminate timeframe as to when they would get back to us. Any follow-up questions on that? All right, uh, next thing, uh, IBC. Uh, so with regards to the security audit, it's been completed, it's done, uh, everything was fine, no no error, no issues uh, were found. Um, <clears throat> the only pending item here really is that um, in order to finalize the certificates, they will need the uh, repositories where the code will live. Uh, we haven't taken a decision yet where that's going to be. Um, I believe ENF marketing. I think um, I think uh, I'm trying to remember. I think Zach was able to secure Antelope IBC I think, and that's yes. his fault. Right. Okay. Yeah. I think he secured a a few domains for that, uh, but I guess. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so this is, this is, um, um, 
essentially what we what we've been discussing in that group was um all of that uh, i guess like uh infrastructure that we would put together for the hosting of the code for the hosting of the documentation uh maybe for uh faq section um having like a, a bit of like sales collateral that can explain how it work uh maybe we could have also there a generic um uh ibc wrap lock token uh ui that connects all chains uh so so all of these decisions are kind of pending i guess like um uh if anyone has any uh any uh, interest in participating i guess um <laughs> I would say well, <laughs> your help is welcome. Uh, right now, that's been largely uh, an initiative by ENF Marketing to kind of get that together. But I think they're also looking a little bit for guidance from the rest of the coalition. If the coalition has any strong views or any um, any uh, preferences in how all of that should be handled, then can just uh, uh, let us know and we'll, we'll adjust everything. Can you let me know who's who's responsible for marketing of this on the ENF side, and I can I can put you guys in touch with with our side, so we can we can uh, start shilling this together. Yeah, um, there's the group that uh, I believe Brendan Lovejoy has created. Um, I'm not sure if, if yeah, I, I guess think everybody's in there. No, yeah. I think it's pretty, yeah, it's uh, not. Not 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 the Telos nor the Wax people, but I'll 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 add I'll add you guys. Yeah, please and, uh, please add everybody, of course. Okay, so um, I'll I I can't add you, Lucas, because of your settings. But I'll uh, I'll ask uh, Brendan maybe if he can um, upgrade the group and give us a uh, invite link that we can use. Yeah, just send me an invite link because otherwise I'm gonna be in like. Hundred scammy channels in a in, a, in an hour. <laughs> well, yeah. the way the way around that, uh, Lucas, is if you add Guillaume as a contact and he adds you as a contact, he yeah. can now add you to channels. That's it, and you can add oh, him to channels. That way, that. it doesn't I open it up for today. everybody. It's the easiest cool. way to do okay. it. All right. Yeah. Same, I'll, same I'll goes for uh, same goes for Jesse. I'm not in your contacts either. Uh, so if you want, you can just uh, add me there, and um, I'll be able to. Hey. Um, invite you as well uh, I'll add you. perfect okay uh so yeah and then uh and then like once the code is deployed to the um to whatever uh github repo that we choose uh essentially from uh at that point they will be able to update the certificates and uh that my, uh, that item can be closed as a that's the only pending item for the security audit Right. And I guess now about the, the, the actual state of IBC. So uh, all of the M6 have been completed. All the accounts have been uh, created. So uh, we're now uh, able to finalize the deployment. Uh, actually, we, we, we can, can finalize it very quickly. Um, the one question I guess I have for everyone here is when do we want this to go live? Um, ENF marketing requested or suggested um, around the 26 or 27 because uh, until then they have a pretty uh, packed media calendar. So they were uh, they were thinking roughly same time next week would be their their preference. Um, the the way that that's going to play out is also we can also discuss that. Um, Obviously, I mean, there's there's two ways that I can see that uh, we can can go about this. Uh, as it stands, I have the control over all of these accounts that uh, I, I essentially can configure to um, prepare everything, and then uh, the, the 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 goal is to essentially configure everything, turn it over to the BPs, and then uh, essentially activate the whole thing. Uh, we can decide if we want to activate through an MSIG of all the BPs of all the chains, or if we want me to essentially activate everything as I turn it over. So um, pros and cons, of course, I think um, from a governance standpoint, it's a bit cleaner if it's the BPs that uh, sign an MSIG to activate everything. But timing wise, that means that uh, each chain will kind of activate on their own timeframe. And uh, that, that that may result in uh, like 
some trains being ready earlier and others not and kind of be a bit more confused um, launch. If I do it myself, then I can essentially, we can essentially agree on a precise day and time. And then at that time, I activate everything and I turn over to uh, to the VPs of the chains. So that's a, a bit cleaner in terms of... Uh, I prefer the latter approach. So on our side, when we communicated with the VPs, they understood that the process would be, they would be creating the accounts, would be deploying the contracts. You would then be reconfiguring all the contracts, making right. the you know necessary changes, and then essentially relegating the keys. So right. that fits in line with what they approve. They essentially approve that you're going to be making these changes, configurations, and redeploying. Yeah. Either way, then it's relegated afterwards, right? You're you're well, knowing I mean, you're, you're relegating it to ELSIO prods. Yeah, absolutely. The here we're just talking about activating it. So the way the way I would um originally like my suggestion was that I would configure everything. I would turn uh, I would I would leave it in a disabled state. So essentially all the contracts are set to disabled. And uh, I would create an MSIG for all the BPs of all of the chains to actually uh, enable it. So then they would sign that in, that MSIG, and whenever that MSIG got executed, would enable uh, IBC um, for for that particular chain. Problem with that, of course, is now you have four set of BPs that will uh, possibly enable things at different times, and uh, it will it will essentially make make the this the the setup like incomplete if you want like where one chain might be activated while the other is not so someone that would test would probably be able to do the like the outbound transfer but would not be able to redeem their their tokens because the other one is not activated and so on and so forth so i mean it's, it's a bit it's a bit more clumsy if we if we a bit more clunky if we do it like this um i think i think if if i essentially if we essentially agree as a group what date and time we want this to activate, then I can uh, essentially um, activate exactly at that time as I turn over control to the BPs. And then uh, everything is basically like going to be working from day one, from minute one. Yeah, I understand that will be the best approach, uh, Guillaume. Uh, un unfortunately, I think on our side, there's, there's a lot of other stuff going on and uh, and I, I honestly don't know exactly when when this is going to happen for us. I, I was planning to do it after, I, I mean, enabling it after the Antelope upgrade okay. um, that we are just in the middle of. Um, we're also so you're, now... You're upgrading to uh, the latest Leap version? 3.1, because 3.2 is not stable for us yet. So we're okay. going to be upgrading to 3.1. Okay, um, and there's a there's a feature request as I, I mentioned before. There's a feature request which is action return value. If you activate that one, uh, it will change the uh, way that the IBC proofs are computed. So um, just just let me know if possible, or um, just just include me in in your in your um, yeah. I guess upgrade working group, yeah. just so that we uh, update things on our side as well. Okay, cool. And then we would we would then. Um... After this is done, then then we would come up with the actual date when this is right. going to happen. I, I think you know I I understand that in a perfect world we would just pick a date, but I just don't know. It's gotcha. going to be very difficult to coordinate across four different chains to do it at the same time. I mean, we're all kind of pushing through various different priorities, and I, yeah. I can just tell. I mean, I can speak for Wax, right? There's there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going on, and we're also now. Uh, you know, looking into redesigning our tokenomics. Um, so that takes priority and, you know, there's, uh, there is a so, date. It's, it's, I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I understand. And in that case, in that case, probably, uh, it's probably best then to um, just uh, for, for me to essentially deploy everything, uh, but turn it over in deactivated mode to all of the chains and then let the chains decide when to activate of course we'll have to have that kind of caveat that people understand that uh if they transfer to wax for example uh they will have to wait until wax enables their side to be able to do anything with tokens or to um to bring them back uh so that's that's a bit of a uh er exercise but is, um, is there a way to fail the transfer is there a way to fail outbound transfer when the uh, destination chain is not enabled uh, so people no. don't send a whole bunch of stuff and then be unfortunately like, oh, not 
unfortunately not um what i mean i mean if i guess i guess i guess the one thing i could potentially do then is um i i could uh i mean i mean i could create separate m sigs for uh each of the corresponding networks essentially so like eos would have an m sig to activate wax another m sig to activate telos another m sig to activate ux and then yeah. uh they would only activate say telos and ux and hold on wax that's a smart UX. way to do it because right. exactly because then once the chains are ready we can have that conversation between the chains and coordinate and actually have a date and all that stuff without without having a a kind of like this black hole where people start losing funds and right. that would not be good right yeah. Bear I in mind that, also that that the code itself is all that's needed to to perform that. So I mean, if uh, I mean, uh, as we publish the code, if some chain decide not to do it the quote quote official way right away, it does not prevent someone else from deploying the contracts and uh, doing it in a unofficial capacity. But that's that's kind of a separate discussion. So, so um, I think there's still value. And I completely understand uh, what where Lucas is coming from for Wax, and I think that's a, a Wax internal decision. I would like to see us uh, the 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 rest the rest of the chains uh, um, release this in a coordinated way uh, soon. Uh, I think that that you've already given uh, one potential uh, op option for um, for how to how to manage that. Um, through the code, and I think that any any front end that's de deployed would be uh, would be you know could have that disabled for now the wax and uh, yeah. and that would probably be fine since most since most people who are going to have a problem with it are likely to be people who are using a a graphic interface as opposed to as opposed to um, you know Clios or or programmatic what whatnot we can we can reach them probably um, so. But I think there's a lot of value in getting this out there, and it may even make it easier for for Wax to see the value or and uh, and and come on. Um, you know, again, it's all internal, but knowing that this is up and people are excited about it, I think we do need to. I think it is becomes a competitive advantage over other over other uh, multi chain ecosystems that I think we should agree yeah. uh, pursue aggressively. That's my take. So I would like to see I I would like to see um, UX Telos EOS uh, coordinating on on a date if possible and you know always with the message that that Wax will be joining soon. So how do people feel about that? Yeah, that totally totally works for us. Um, I think I think ENF was saying, like I said, uh, one week, give or take. Wax is saying undetermined. Um, I guess for for UX, it can be ready like tomorrow. Um, it's uh, mm -hmm. it's totally doable. Uh, I think so, it, I think the week is. I, I I have no problem with a week, right? Like I, week. I I understand the the we could all be if we have a date and it's a week ish out that we can all um, that we can all engage our our various marketing departments and communities and whatnot. So we will have some anticipation. Uh, so that's, that's not an impediment. I totally get it. Um, I just don't want to, I just don't want to, I think there's still value in, in the rest of us coordinating our efforts together. Um, and it helps the identity of, of uh, Antelope as, you know, as the coalition is actually doing things together on, on these big issues, rather than each of us coming out independently, um, you know, with our timing and whatnot. I mean, this by definition, it, it, we kind of have to come out together for this to have any real value. All right, everybody. So we are three minutes over time. Um, are there any final things that are urgent to talk about today? not urgent but i can give a 30 second update on something that's kind of a win and kind of cool yeah go ahead um so when we uh when we decided upon the antelope uh branding and name uh we had not uh finalized i guess the the uh trademark component but as of uh more than a month ago now uh antelope the trademark belongs to us in australia china eu 
United Kingdom, South Korea, New Zealand, United States, and Canada. So just so that everybody knows, we 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 as in the That's collective, awesome. we uh, own the trademark to Antelope. Now we is the ENF, but did, I'm, this is recorded. It's a collective we. That's that's great to so hear. We can, um, we can add TM. We can, yes, yes, we can. Is it uh, or or R circle R if it's actually a registered trademark? It is um, a registered trademark, so it's through the Madrid uh, protocol, the WIPO uh, Madrid protocol, and in in the countries that I listed, it's a class forty two. Uh, and then I can, you know, anyways, I don't want to drag on, but just it's it's a win for Antelope. We actually own our own IP. That's great. That's great. Um, we probably should add, at least at once per page in the first instance add the Circle R registered trademark. Um, uh, just as but yeah that's that's fantastic thanks thanks eve that is a great update and that's it um and right, thanks well, everybody you guys it's been great all right take care everybody i'm, I'm guessing that, i'm guessing this is done so take care everybody talk to you guys next week bye, bye, everybody. <laughs> bye, -bye. Cheers. thanks everyone bye.